Yeah, recently um, she, under the sort of conditions of our uh, relationship with Beijing, she's meant to receive consular visits every month, a 30-minute visit with consular officials. That seems to have been suspended um, and her partner has suggested that uh, her condition is deteriorating um, in uh, sort of a mental and a physical sense. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of concern and obviously she hasn't been able to talk to her children um, or her partner for quite some time. And we still don't know exactly what she's being accused of. No, this is a very odd thing about it. I mean, there's a very broad accusation that she's been divulging state secrets, um, but we have no details on what those secrets might be um, because this case pertains to national security and that's used as a pretext for divulging almost nothing. Um, even her lawyer can't, uh, can't say what, uh, what the allegations are against her. Well, her trial was held behind closed doors. Do we know when or how a verdict will be reached? What will the process be? Look, it's pretty unclear at this stage. Um, a verdict was expected to be reached way back in March, um, and that was deferred again, I think, in July of this year. So uh, this sort of charge, usually um, if she's found guilty, it would be somewhere between five to ten years that she'd be um, expected to serve in prison. Um, but the charge is brought by the Ministry of State Security, so it's really unclear just how serious the charge is. And, and for the most serious charges, you're talking about um, basically life imprisonment. Um, so it's very unclear at this stage what will happen. And it must be incredibly stressful for her family. What do you think is the motivation uh, behind her detention? Look, again, this is very unclear. Um, people at the time, back in 2020, were saying this is mapping onto the broader deterioration of Australia-China relations. Um, so, you know, there, there's some speculation that as part of the thaw, we might be um, looking at, uh, you know, possibly as a gesture of friendship, her being released um, if the charges are fairly minor. But we, we, we don't know what the charges are. Um, so, you know, this is absolute speculation to put pressure on the Chinese government to release Cheng Lei if Beijing doesn't have evidence of wrongdoing? Well, I mean, this is the whole problem with evidence. So the, the conviction rate of trials in China is if you're charged 99% of the time, you are found guilty. Um, so it's, it's, it's almost a, a given that she'll be found guilty of something. Um, and if the evidence, you know, may not meet our standards, um, it, it simply doesn't matter. She will chances are be found guilty. Meanwhile, what did you make of the address at the National Press Club by the Chinese ambassador earlier this week? Look, um, it's it, it's a real turn of events because Xiao Tian had been presented as this sort of fresh face of Chinese diplomacy. He was sort of known as the smiling ambassador. Um, and he'd been going around generating a lot of goodwill in the business community um, and with the government. But, um, you know, once the issue of Taiwan is raised, the friendly face drops very, very quickly um, to the point where, you know, rhetoric was being used that was, you know, essentially wolf warrior type rhetoric. Chinese ambassador using such rhetoric with the ambassador to France also making similar statements. Yes, I mean, this is uh, the ambassador to France um, raised the prospect that uh, people in Taiwan would need to be re educated and that he used this phrase that is so loaded. I mean, it's, it's an extremely dark word in Chinese, has a very long and dark history and a dark present in terms of what's happening in Xinjiang. Um, so for this word to be used and the ambassador in Australia um, to not back away from it at all uh, is, is a concerning development, you'd have to say. Mm. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi Jinping is expected to visit Saudi Arabia next week. What's the purpose of this trip? Look, it seems um, that, you know, this is, this is about building friendship um, broadly, broadly with the Middle East. Um, Saudi Arabia and China have long had a really uh, interesting relationship uh, in that the, the Saudis, I think, don't have, shall we say, despite the, the value of their trade relationship, a, a tremendous understanding of China. Their, their, their understanding seems, seems fairly weak. Um, but the purpose, obviously, is to, uh, you know, shore up China's relations in the Middle East with a key partner that I think America is seen to have of, you know, seems to be wedgeable, if you like, given the closeness of the Trump administration's relationship with Saudi Arabia. Graham Smith, great to talk. Thanks so much. Thank you.